this is Johannes. And this is Cinema. And you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings. And today we are taking a look at our top 10 gateway games. Gateway games, that's right. Games to get people dragged into this awesome hobby yeah. so that we will have people to play with and don't we have need to them. play all with each other because yeah. we, we start hating each other. And, 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 and we... not all games are good with only two players. No, they're not. Like, for example, auction games are horrible with two players. Yeah, yeah. So we need to get people to play games. And I know that you as a hobby board gamer really need to get people to play games yeah. as well. Like, we always feel like we need more peoples. Always. Always more peoples. Never peoples. enough. Yeah. Never enough people. We get need to get more people into the fun. So we are doing our top 10 gateway games. Like... Should we talk a little bit about how we made this list? Yeah, like, we should. What is a gateway game? What is the purpose of a gateway game? What do we want to do with a gateway game? So what are your thoughts about gateway games? Uh, I really want the, game, the, the people I introduced to gaming to uh, know, uh, get a little bit of a feeling of mm -hmm. the games that I actually play. So teach a few mechanics that I use in heavier games. Yeah, that's yeah, a really for good. Example. That's a really good. Like you are, you are more into that uh, than me. Like you think more about that. It feels like than I have done with my list. Basically, my list is games I enjoy playing with people who haven't played many games. Some of you might say like, "Oh, that game is too heavy," or "That game is horrible." But for us, I have actually used almost. I think I've used all of these as gateway games. Introduce people to them, or these are games that introduce me into gaming. Yeah. And games that really are simple. It should be easy to teach. Shouldn't be like few of them and take an hour to teach. That's awesome, but not just a mm. gateway game. Like I remember the th the time I, I introduced my friend to Eclipse as the first game <laughs> he played. Like I can say now, Eclipse isn't on my list. That's not a really good gateway Spoiler. game. Spoiler alert! <laughs> but because that's a horrible gateway game. But I have learned over the years that I can't just throw people into the deep end at the beginning. We need to start off with easy rules, not many mechanics, as I say, maybe one, two main mechanics that, that drive the game so that you, when you understand that, yeah. you will easily understand what you're doing and, and uh, you can have the possibility to win. Like, yeah. I think that's important too. Yeah, because we, uh, we, we talked about uh, luck in games before mm -hmm. and we don't like when it's too much luck, but in games, way games, that could be a really valuable thing because then everybody has the equal chance of winning, even if you played it 10 times before. If not equal, a better yeah. chance of winning, yeah, of course. So, yeah. I think that's really, that's some of our thoughts about it, yeah, I, I think. think. So. so if you if you watch this list, or if, if you just think like, oh, that's a stupid choice, or if you have another way of seeing gateway games, please let us know, because we, we love just interacting with comments, and um, this is the first video in a while, so it's awesome yeah. to be back. It is. Yeah, we're on YouTube. It's awesome. We're really happy to be back. That's I wanted to get that out of the way as well. Yeah. So I'm going to do another video telling a little bit about why we've been away for some time now, but, but this time it's top 10 gateway games. Yeah, let's do So you want to start. This. Yeah, You want to start with your number 10. It's going to be really interesting. I feel like number 10 is going to be uh, amazing. So what is your number 10? My number 10 is an amazing game. Whoa! It's higher on Johannes' list. That means I'm right. Okay, so let's <laughs> go to my number 10. My number 10 is a game by one of the designers I enjoy saying the name of the most, especially when we speak English, because he's Norwegian. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we just love saying Christian Amundsen a speed. It's like one of my favorite things to say. So if you're watching this, Christian, you know I enjoy saying your name in, in English uh, or in Norwegian with speaking <laughs> English, but that doesn't have anything to do with the game because the game is... Escape the Curse of the Temple. You probably know this game if you haven't lived under a rock the last 10 years. If you have lived under a rock, you might have played this game as well, because you could actually play this game under a rock if you had a table. You could play basically almost every game under a rock if you had a table, so that yeah. doesn't really make any sense at all. No. But Escape the Curse of the Temple is a cooperative game. I'm not a huge co-op fan, but this is a good game to get people to understand co-op game exists. One of the main reasons I really like this as a co-op game is it lasts only 10 minutes. So it can't <laughs> last like for 3 hours I'm gonna sit there with a co-op game. I don't like mm. that. So a 10, 10 minute co-op game and it's also like a real time stress game. I do like those more than everyone in my group so we don't usually play those games. But I, I enjoy those kind of stressful uh, games like that and Escape the Curse of the Temple is especially fun because more people like it because it's not about being the fastest. 
Mm. Like, I'm pretty fast in these yeah. fast games, so people usually don't like to play fast games with me. But, but when there's co-op... Yeah, I can be fast we can and it's going to be that. good. I'm going to roll dice like a maniac and just move around and getting masks and making people happy. So, he escaped the curse of the temple. is this Indiana Jones game where you just run around in the temple trying to escape during 10 minutes, gaining crystals, moving around, exploring the temple, finding the exit and just having fun there's this awesome challenge list that we yeah. started doing that Christian Amos and Espy made this uh, this amazing uh, I, it's really horrible to have a name a game I just this is nothing to do with the game but I just remember that I'm probably not gonna know the name of the designers of all these games because I'm stupid but so it's horrible to start with a game that I uh, know it so well so Ooh. yeah that's awesome <laughs> so Christian Amos and Espy huge shout out there shout yeah. out to you something like that. But it's like a that. really good game. It I is. like it a lot. And uh, I recommend at the start that you use the base set only, but you can get the, the big box version as well with the how many expansions? Two? Two, two of the yeah. three expansions. Those yeah. are really good as well. So yeah. Yeah, I, I think the game wouldn't be as fun only the base game. Like yeah, I think these expansions it's... is where it's at. So the big box is where it's at for me. Yeah, of course, but if it's the first time they're playing it, it's nice to like take the first 10 minutes with only the base of and course. then add more after like three, three times or so. Depending on how yeah. good you are. Yeah. Like when you play with my parents, we would never do more than the base game mm. because they don't do stress well. So yeah, <laughs> that's my number 10, Escape the Curse of the Temple. And then it's your number 9. Yeah, it is. And that is Lords of Waterdeep. Okay, so my number nine, I, I, you don't get to talk about yours because mine is Lords of Waterdeep. So, take it away. Oh, you have to do this. I one. have to do it. Okay. It's so long since I've played this game. Lords of Waterdeep is basically what people say like a Stone Age killer. Stone Age was yeah, the, the I agree. Yeah. Stone Age was the the worker placement game that got us into worker placement, and I really enjoy worker placement. Though it's like one of my favorite mechanisms. Mm -hmm. I really, really like that. Um. And Stone Age, we, we tried to play it like two years after we, we first got it. Yeah. I know a lot of people still like it, but for us it was plainly boring. Yeah, it was really boring. It felt like all was obvious what we wanted to do. Uh, and then we got lots of water deep, which was fun, more fun. It's not at all one of my favorite games. Like, no. I still think it's okay to play, uh, but I think it's a really great gateway into to work a placement, yeah. especially for people like, uh, this has been said like 60 billion times, but especially for people who like playing Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. who enjoy that theme. It's really simple to get him in like, oh look here, it's the city of Waterdeep. So what's the story? Nothing, it's a paced on theme. You just use these little cubes and they're wizards. But it looks really nice. It looks like a yeah. wizard cube, and this is a warrior cube because he's orange. Oh, thematic. It's a yeah. beautiful theme in this game. <laughs> We don't mind, we love dry euros. Yeah. I just I just love that this theme is so pasted on that. It could basically have been the Merchants of Essen. Yeah. Uh, the Porch of Essen. That's, Porch that's the best Essen. game. Yeah. The Porch of Essen. Go play that. That's a really good game. So yeah, <laughs> I, I really, really think this is a fun game. It, it has a lot of variability, a lot of different things going on. Yeah. But in the base, it's a worker placement game. Place a worker, do the action. It's pretty quick to teach because it's, it's just look at the action spots and yeah. do what it says basically with a couple of rules about points and that's it so yeah. do, do you like the game as well of course because yeah i do it's your number nine it's uh, not the game uh, that i pick uh, mostly. but you did pick it here for number yeah nine. but uh, usually when i'm playing games rather with others i usually play other games but if i would introduce new people to uh, worker placement mm -hmm. this would be the game that so, i would choose let's just a quick question yeah like, did you put this on the list because you don't have a better worker placement gateway game? Yeah, I think so. I did so as well. Yeah. That, that's basically because that's why it's so low on our list, yeah. especially on mine. Because I don't know a better, like, introductionary worker placement game. I would love there to be one because I don't love Lords of Waterdeep so much. No. I think it's okay. Uh, but, eh. But I, really, if you have something that we missed, yeah, let us please know. Please let us know if, if yeah. it's like a really good work and placement gateway game we need that, that we that game. Yeah. haven't gotten yet. Let us know. But but for now, I, I still think it's fun to play. Yeah. I'm not bored when I play no, this. No, it's no. not like it's not like my brain is melting, but it's a fun game to play. Yeah. That's both for number nines. Yeah. Lords of Waterdeep. So that was my number nine. So let's go to your number eight. My number eight is Seven Wonders. My number eight is Seven Wonders. So we're basically pretty synced up here at the beginning. Yeah, we Do are. Do you want to tell people what Seven Wonders is about? Yeah, it's basically a drafting game mm -hmm. where you have your own civilization and you're trying to make the, be the 
that better over three ages mm -hmm. and you're trying to build your wonder and get materials and stuff like that and i think it's a really neat introduction to drafting so and if goes... somebody is watching who yeah. doesn't know what drafting is do you want to tell them what drafting is oh, no you can do that okay just because if somebody watches and doesn't know what it is it's gonna yeah. be better if you know like oh you do drafting and people are like what, what is this drafting you're talking about so drafting is is basically what you do like i i come from magic uh, magic the gathering played so much drafts there basically a draft is something like this there's different Thinks about it, but the seven wonders, you get a hand of seven cards, you look at them, you say, I want this one card, probably gonna want all of them, but you want this one card, this is the one I want the most. You put it down in front of you, send the rest on the way to the next player, and then you flip it over and everybody plays that card. Mm -hmm. So basically you get the cards going around yeah. around the table and you picking cards, drafting it, and then you can say like, oh, that player really wants this card, maybe I should take that mm -hmm. and just use it as a wonder because then you put it face down and stuff like that. So that's basically drafting. So where yeah. were you in your seven wonders um, talking? Do you remember? Yeah, I think so. Um, you, I think it's a really neat introduction to drafting mm -hmm. and you can play it with up to seven people as well. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. And I think it's um, it's a lot of symbols and a little too much of rules in the beginning. Mm. But uh, I think it's nice that you only only have to focus on the two people beside you. Yeah. Uh, do you want to explain that? Because no, yeah. it's not really something to explain. Just like yeah. you, you only interact with the people to your right and to your left. Yeah. That's kind of one of the genius things about the game. That's the reason why you can play it with three, four, five, six, and seven players in basically the same amount of time because everybody's playing at the same, same time and you only care about what people to your right or left do because you can't do anything but with that player sitting over in the corner there. So you might look at what I'm doing, but you, you can't do anything with it. Yeah. But yeah, so you said like it's a little bit of a hurdle to teach it, but I used it as a gateway game successfully many times it's like a couple of the scoring rules that's a bit hard to understand but after like taking a couple of cards most people are are in the game and understand what it's about so it's it's really really good great classic it's it's a classic it's a modern yeah, classic it is. it's a really really good game that i i really think it's a great gateway game absolutely so that's both for number eight you want to say anything more about it no i think we covered it yeah that's awesome so we're at your number seven my number seven is the higher on Johannes' list. Oh yeah, you'd usually do that. Yeah. Like your number seven is usually yeah. higher on my list. So my number seven is your number ten. Oh yeah. It's Azul. Yeah. This is a game by Michael Kiesling, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Michael Kiesling, he made like all the games <laughs> from Essen last year. So just to look on the shelf here and I see a Michael Kiesling You game. can say Michael Kiesling and you probably right. Yeah, because yeah. he made all the games at Essen last year. <laughs> but this is a really, really great game. A game I, I didn't love it the first time I played it. No. But but it's it's so simple and it's so beautiful. Oh, it's so and it's stunning. easy yeah. to get people like hooked on like this simple, simple game. It's an abstract game. I haven't always been the biggest fan of abstracts. But after getting Devon uh, and those oh, yeah. GIF games, really right, my eyes got open to, to abstract yeah. games. And I might have chosen one of those, but because all of them are only for two players, I do enjoy getting more players in. Like I do have yeah. some gateway games for two. Uh, I don't know if they're on my list. I don't think they are. But, but I do really enjoy Azul. It's a really, really simple, it's a drafting game. This is also a drafting game. So you, yeah, you're drafting kinda. the tiles. It is a drafting game. Yeah. And basically you are drafting and you also like set collection, trying to, to place tiles on a square uh, in the right order to get the most points. It's pretty simple. It can be a little cutthroat. Like if you play with, like when you play two players, yeah. I can like see exactly what you want to do and just take it yeah. if I want it. And you're going to be stuck with, with negative points. But Very many negative It's a really, points. really good game. So yeah, why do you like it? Oh, it's so beautiful, first of all, <laughs> it <laughs> but it's a, it's a good game as well. And I think it's um, it's interesting for new people to like get into because it's like, oh, this is cool and this is, it looks really nice. So you want yeah. to play it just by looking at it and it's really nice. Absolutely, because not all people love how a, love how a, how a dry Euro game yeah. looks. We do. We're like, oh, these are all we these, don't mind. these chits that looks like nothing. We love it. But but some people like love <laughs> components that look awesome. We do as well. But but Azul is one of those eye-popping games that yeah. when you see it, you're just going to feel like, oh, what is this? And you want to eat the pieces, but don't do it. <laughs> uh, I tried. Didn't taste well. So uh, if somebody has one of those tiles, we, we need it. <laughs> so that is my number seven and your number ten. Again, we really recommend, of course, because it's on the list. 
That's Azul. Mm. So, your number six. My number six is La Isla. By? Uh, I think it's Stefan Fell. It is Stefan Fell. Yeah, that's why we bought it. Yeah, I think it's a really neat game. It's uh, quite new to us. We played it, uh, I think... Uh, Four or five times? Yeah. Last year? Yeah. We got it last summer? Mm. Like in a... Somebody had it, like, we're gonna buy a couple of games from him. It's like, yo, you won't like Isla. And we're like, yeah, sure. it's Stefan Fell. We wanna it's play a game. Stefan Fell game. No, that's... We, we, not, we don't have that low standards. <laughs> There's some games we hate. <laughs> let's make a top 10 games we hate yeah let's do that it's gonna be somebody yeah. who love that list but so. uh i think like, it's like it's uh, actually a good uh, introduction to stock games um because it's like yeah. you're, tr- you're on, on this island trying to catch different animals mm-hmm. and you want to catch the animals that is the most most worth yeah so if you have a lot of animals catch already you have to like make those go up in value Mm -hmm. or you have to okay what's most valuable and try to catch that so you're moving around your men to surround the animals and then catch it and uh, you use your cards it's a multi-use cards so that's a a nice introduction to that as well cool yeah i can't verify anything you just said because i don't remember anything about the game i think it's a okay game it's not something i would pick up from the shelf but you would so maybe we'll play it sometime in the future if we need something to introduce people to some games and it, the animals look uh, nice and there's uh, colors to it so i think i think it looks nice as well it's, yeah. Uh, yeah but it's a, like it, it's it's a dry euro game yeah, so no it's like thin, really thin, thin chips no. and really yeah. like it's it's thin shits and okay but the game is it's it's fun it's not yeah. a horrible game and it's your number six yeah i wouldn't have it on my top 10 but you would so yeah okay. again i'm right so awesome we can discuss that later. <laughs> my number six is century spice road what other people call the splendor killer that's and it I, is yeah that's like the splendor killer i don't know why i said like a clown or something Ho ho ho! It's the Spandor Killer! That would be like a really, like that would feel like a really horrible, like, it's it too? <laughs> I am the Spandor Killer! Like, a I, serial I, I, killer? Or something? I think that's a really bad mascot for the game. Yeah. Ho ho ho! I, I wouldn't do that. So, Plan B Games, do not hire me as being the, the Spandor Killer clown. Mm, yeah. Please don't do that. Please do it. Please do it. Please. Please, if you're out there. Hire me now. So yeah, Century Spice Road is this kind of really nice. And this is another one that's looking really cool. Yeah. You get these bowls with with resources, and you're basically gonna try to get the resources like a, a engine building kind mm. of, like you're getting new cards into your hand, which is gonna try to make an engine. So you can play a card which gets you resources, and another card that maybe upgrade those resources, or you get better resources, and you're gonna use those resources to buy mission cards or like contract cards. So it's kind of like a a contract for fulfillment and you're trying to get the most points uh, for the, at the end of the game it's a quick game it's super simple to teach yeah. it's like play a card and just take the resources that's on it or trade them into the other resources that's there yeah. it's like there's nothing to it like basically that's the rules yeah you could almost play the games by just hearing that yeah uh, you should read the rules, but you could basically <laughs> play the games by that. So uh, this is a really, really fun game. I'm really looking forward to the next game in the trilogy. It's a trilogy. The next game is coming. Um, I think there was, I saw a couple of copies after the UK Gaming Expo. I really wish I would have worse. They were, they were staring at a copy, but I wasn't. I was here in Norway, not in England. Uh, and I didn't get a copy, but the game is coming on Origins. So hopefully we will get a copy in Norway pretty soon after yeah. that. So this is not on your list, but do you like the game? Yeah, I really do. Uh, it was a cut truth, but I have to. Yeah, it was not space enough for them all. Is the game cutthroat? No, it was a cutthroat list. Oh yeah, I you mean you, you had to cut it yeah, off the list? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I misunderstood you there. So yeah, that's my number six. That's Century Spice Roll by Plan B Games. And then it's your number five. Yeah, it is. And my number five is Via Nebula. By? Oh, Martin Wallace. That's great. Yeah. That's great. And it is actually like a really simplified version of his other train games. What do you call them? Train games? Yeah, train games. Yeah, yeah basically. So, so he has Steam and uh, Age of Steam and Railways of the World. I think also is him. I think he's I think that's yeah. like the, 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 the like the, the, the steps. So we enable us somewhere where Railways of the World somewhere yeah. on that. Uh, and we enable us like way down here. No, it's, it isn't that much easier yeah, than. Yeah, but, yeah. Quite simple. And it's a really nice 
like introduction to the uh, concept of uh, chain games. You can yeah. take, uh, you can't take like loans and stuff like that, but you are on a like um, what you call it, desolated. Uh, area. Yeah, we're in somewhere with a lot of uh, fog. fog. That's yeah. like we enable us like through yeah. the fog, isn't it? And you're trying to like make your path and explore and find the spots where there are resources mm -hmm. and bring them back to your building site so you can build your buildings and then uh, what do you call it? Fulfill those contracts. Yeah, contracts. Yeah, mm -hmm. and get uh, points and points. special actions. Yeah, it's a very fun game. I really, really have been enjoying my place. It's really cool, quick. Especially with two players, you can yeah. play it like 20 minutes. It's a really good introduction game to, especially if you like playing Age of Steam and games like that. Like if you want to introduce people to that and see if they like the root building and uh, the fact that the resources you find aren't your resources. People can just yeah. use the resources like it is in these other train games. And, and Martin, Wall Martin Wallace is an amazing designer. Yeah, he is. He has some games that we really, really enjoy. Um, so we enable is a really great, it's not on my list, but it's, it's a very, very good game that yeah. I, I highly recommend as well. So anything else? No, I think that's it. That's your number five. And then we're at my number five, which is basically the game that introduced me to board games. Which is Dominion, or like to heavy, no, heavy hobby board games. Basically, this is the game that introduced me to it all. I played this game quite a few years before I owned it. I played it quite a few years before I started to play games. This was the time I played Magic the Gathering and a lot of Munchkin. <laughs> oh, I've Those been were there. Dark days. Not the Magic, that's a good <laughs> game. The other one I don't want to talk about. But yeah, we actually played quite a lot of Dominion because uh, one of the guys uh, went to my school, he had the game, and he said, like, let's play this game of Dominion. I was like, wow, this is really interesting. It's different. So basically, it was my, 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 my gateway game. I played the games over a hundred times. It's a great, great game. It's especially good at two people. It's great at three. I would probably not play it at four if nobody, if not everybody know, know the yeah, game. Yeah, I think so, it's too slow with a lot of players. Yeah, I think two or three players is okay. It's nice. I like to play with five or six. I think you can play oh. with six people with expansion. Oh, thank you. That would be horrible. Don't I do would that. rather just watch paint dry. No, actually, yeah, I actually, I would. <laughs> like, actually, I would rather watch paint dry than play Dominion with six players. But yeah, Dominion is an amazing game. There's so much variability, which makes it interesting, even after you play it like a hundred times. A lot of the expansions, I only have like three, four of the gazillion expansions. Like every year it's like, oh, this is the last expansion, we promise you. Next year, boom, Dominion. <laughs> There's more. We found this new thing and made new cards because Sorry. we need money. Or actually, we don't need it. We have all the money we need for 16 lifetimes because we sell Dominion. But <laughs> yeah, they make so much Dominion. I think that's like six years ago, it's like, this is, this, this is the last one. We promise it's the last it's lost. I don't know why uh, I speak like this, but <laughs> I have no idea what's happening. It's just uh, my voice is changing all the time. So yeah, that's Dominion. Uh, you also like the game, but you don't like it as much as me, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I was freaked out about that. About, about, no. My voice? Yeah, your voice. It just happens. I, I like it a lot. You don't need all the expansions. No. Like, we have plenty of variability with just a few we have. Uh, you. But we do have like five. Oh, we do. Okay. <laughs> we stuffed them all into one box, yeah, I think. It we... doesn't fit. No, it doesn't. At all. But I think uh, it's really nice uh, to like deck building. Mm -hmm. And I think it's nice that it goes so fast if you know the game uh, from before. So it's fun to play, even if you're not using it as a gateway as well. Mm -hmm. And also you get a totally different experience depending on which cards you have in, in play. So really nice game. Some of those experiences are horrible because yeah. if you do randomness, like some games gonna be horrible. Yeah. Horrible. So you, you got this card and it it's the exact opposite strategy of this card and you have to like make you know, up an eight. Ah, for fun. Yay. So that's Dominion, isn't yeah. it? That's Dominion. That was my number five, so we're on to your number four. My number four is Small World. Small World. Yeah, and this is I think it's known to uh, almost everybody now. Um, yeah, if you're not living under that rock and so on. Who's the designer of that again? Yeah, um, I, I do remember. not remember no, his name. No, I but don't. it's by Days of Wonder, so we yeah. remember one of the two. And it's, uh, you have this giant map and you have like your own... You have a rig. giant map? Yeah. Like, is it so it's huge? It's huge. Like, it's a giant map! <laughs> if you buy the like big version... I don't think the, the map is bigger, is uh, it? I don't know. I but don't buy that, that's like... 
it's really cool dollars. though you get this big ass chest you don't yeah. need a chest like to play small no, world but no, back, to the, game, back to the game yeah. sorry you have a big map big yeah. <laughs> a big map you have and a big have, map it's really good you are like the your race and you have a special ability and it's always like random so you can get a race with a different ability and it's really weird because you can get like uh, good-hearted demons and weird combos like that peaceful and, orcs yeah <laughs> and i think uh, the goal of the game is to like spread out on the areas and get to war with others so you get like points each round and trying to like keep those points yeah it's a, it's a, it's a really simple area yeah. majority area yeah. control game like you try to, to to spread out and what you said like you uh, it's uh, it's a uh, ability for the class and for the race yeah so like you have two abilities that you mix together and every time you will get another ability and when you can't use that race anymore you will put it into stagnation and get another yeah. race so maybe you get like three four races during the game so it's a wild crazy yeah, Fun and game. I think that's really nice for a, a gateway game, especially because if you pick a race in the start, that's uh, like this is going to be awesome, mm -hmm. and it's not awesome. It doesn't work at all. Uh, so then you can just put that one away and get a new one. Absolutely, you, you're not stuck with the, that one decision throughout the game, and I think that's really nice. That it is actually. I haven't thought about that. Like if you start with a strategy and it doesn't work, some games it's hard to change it, but here you have to change it. Yeah. So yeah, that's really that's actually really interesting. I haven't thought about that it's yeah. uh, it's and simple it's, enough it's a couple of more rules than i like to do but it's 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 a good one yeah and it introduces new players to conflict as well yeah and it's strange because we don't usually like conflict but this no, game is no but this is like it's uh, lighthearted i think it's really nice what it says on the box that it's a world of slaughter or something yeah yeah with the s in the, the yeah. parentheses so we get it's a world of laughter yeah yeah it's so beautiful small world is poetry so that's your number four Small world. My number four is a party game. It's a bluffing game. It is Sheriff of Nottingham. This is a really, really fun party bluffing lying game. That's just like the rules are simple and everybody's having a blast. Yeah. This is like even if this is so different than most games we play, we don't play a lot of like party games and stuff like that. But people like to when we play gateway games i really want people to see that there are different kind of games to see that there are stuff that isn't like monopoly that isn't these games that everybody has played that isn't the normal card games and this is completely different you put stuff into a bag and you lie about what's in the bag or you don't lie about what's in the bag what kind of game do that without this like, like except this game and it's really fun to introduce people to this that there's so much more that there's so many different kind of games and i think sheriff of nottingham really does it well uh, and really takes away the stereotype of like yeah. every game being like rolling the die and fighting monsters and being and doing that like games can be everything and that's what i love about board games because games can be everything there's can be games about everything games where you do anything games with different themes came to different mechanics and sheriff of nottingham is a really good gateway game that i love and I love it as well. I think it is a really cool game. Uh, the reason it's not on my list is that I try to avoid party games on this one. Because, uh, yeah, I did. Because I, I looked at our shelf and I was like, oh, that one, but that's a party game. And mm. that's a party game. Mm. And that's a party game. Because it's like going uh, a little hand in hand. So uh, I think that was the reason that it didn't make it on my list today. But I think for me, like, this is kind of on the more strategic yeah, part of, it, of party games yeah you yeah i think so as well actually but um yeah i i, I think it just slipped my mind because i think it's a really good game and it i is. like i hate bluffing over all uh, i absolutely hate it and you're not really good at it no i'm i'm really bad at it but, but i kind of use that to my advantage yeah you do yeah so uh so you're kind it, of good at it i don't i'm bad what? but that's good I'm confused. Yeah, it's, that's that's the point of it. Yeah. Let's do another game, shall we? Yeah, let's do. So that. that's my number four, Sheriff of Nottingham, and let's do your number three. My number three is Power Grid, the card game, and if if you played Power Grid, it's uh, mostly the same. You... And if you haven't, go and do it right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you should. Like, stop the video, play around the Power Grid, get your friends, your enemies, anyone. Yeah. But and if they one... haven't played any board games, play this one instead. Yeah. This is also by Freedom on Frise, 
and uh, it's uh, you have these power stations that you're bidding on, so you get better and better. What do you call them? Power stations? I don't remember right now. It slipped my mind. The, yeah. the second you said power stations, <laughs> they're called but, something. Yeah, you use them to m- put resources in them and make electricity. So, whatever that is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you're bidding for the best power stations for mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. And after the bidding is done, you get to bind the resources. Yeah. And you have to like do it in the backwards order. So if you got the best power station, you get to buy resources last. Mm-hmm. So you have to like, okay, do I, do I, do I take the chance that I, that there will be resources left for me? Uh, will I do like two equal power stations that I use the equal... They use different resources. Yeah. yeah. Or do I like balance a little? Uh, so it's really nice. Um, it, it's a nice uh, introduction to auction gaming. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And me- I love me- auctions. Yeah. And it's also nice to yeah do a little research management as well. Yeah. And this is like if you if you have played Power Grid, this is basically Power Grid without the map. And you can get the public good experience in like an hour. I think yeah. it's really good. And I do agree with you that I, I haven't used this as a, as a gateway game. I haven't done that. But I do agree that it will be a good gateway game. Mm. Because it's... Especially if people have played some video games. Like maybe I wouldn't use this for somebody who have never played no, a game in their no. life. But this is a really, really fun game. And if, if you love Power Grid, like we really love Power Grid, even if you always win. Uh, so <laughs> you love it even more than I do. So, but but this is a game that is, is really fun. It's it's quick. It takes like an hour with five players. It's, it's it, yeah, it, it's, it's quick. It's fun. It's easy to learn. It's 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 a blast. Yeah, it is. Like, of course, it's, it's not... That is easy to play because playing auctions games the first time yeah. is gonna be kind of like hard because you have no idea what people what the things yeah. are worth. Yeah. So, but but so that's like my main negative about this as mm-hmm. a gateway game. But I think with people who have played some games, video gamers, and maybe they play like a couple of games because you don't gonna play like one game and that's a gateway game and then go on to everything else. Mm-hmm. You're gonna play some gateway games. Yeah. So to use this after you played a couple of games, it's it's really good. Mm-hmm. But I have to admit, I was a little un- unsure of this was too heavy for my list. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, bear that in mind if you're playing with new play- players. Yeah, but I do think like if you, if you play a couple of games and you see that people yeah. feel like, okay, we understand this and you can play this easily. Yeah, you can. Absolutely, that's your number three and that's then my number three is Potion Explosion. This is also kind of this whimsical, strange game where you have these marbles. This is one of, another one of those like as eye popping. You really look at it it's like, what is this thing? We want to, oh, can you play this? What can you do with this? It's a really, and it's fun. It's really quick, it's a set collection, getting the right colors, trying to match it. I played it with a couple of people from work, like last year I think, time is just flying away. Sometime last year uh, we played it and it was a lot of fun, like they played a couple of games before, but this was a really, really good gateway game. Uh, the rules are pretty simple, they take, I might take like 15 minutes to teach, because there's a couple of nuances like different potions to stuff, that's easy to reference on the back of the rules. Uh, you're trying to, to fulfill potions by do, taking these marbles out of this machine, and when they boom hit together, like you take it out and then some more roll down. If you explode, if you don't have a potion explosion, like two colors get into yeah. each other, you take all of those colors, you're trying to do the right puzzle moves to, to get Mm-hmm. Um, to get the right calls you want and then fill up your potions. Yeah, and people will uh, often say that this reminds them of uh, Candy Crush. Yeah. And that is a really nice like reference point for new players as well. Uh, I really like the game uh, at first, but uh, after a few times playing it, I think I it's not that interesting anymore. So uh, I think that's the reason it's n- not made my list today. Yeah, and I do kind of agree like this isn't a game I would personally play all the time. But I would gladly bring it out to play like yeah. a, a gateway game. So it's 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 a really good game. I really recommend it. Of course, that's why it's on the list. My number three, Potion Explosion. Mm-hmm. So your number two, please. My number two is Bedroom Park, and it's a Thailand game and, um, and a really fun one. Yeah, could you explain this one? I can't because I don't remember so much about it. But okay. basically, it's yeah, I do remember quite a bit about nice. it. Basically, you're just gonna take some tiles. 
Uh, or basically you have some tiles in front of you. You're going to start for a couple of tiles and you have one square piece or, or, or your park. And you're going to take this tile and put it on your park. And when you put it on the park, you're going to lay it over some symbols. And those symbols tell you what you can take. So you can take then a new piece of the park. You can take some uh, small beer, bears. Not beers, you can take beers. <laughs> beer in park! But you can take some bears. And you can take some, some more exotic bears if you get the right uh, placement and, and stuff like that. So basically it's, a, it's like a, a special puzzle. Like like patchwork, like all of these like uh, Uwe Rosenberg Thailand games. But this one is really good also with more than two players. Like yeah. if I was going to do a top 10 two player gateway game, patchwork would be on here. But, but, yeah. but Baron Park is an amazing uh, game. Yeah, because uh, I think patchwork is really, really good. But I think the reason it's not here today is because it's only with two pl Absolutely. people. And Baron Park gives me more freedom. And it also... Uh, it's a few like mix it up with uh, some goals you can reach mm -hmm. if you like build certain things in your park faster than the others. So I think that's really nice. And also people like cute bears. Yeah. So yes, yeah, that's your number two. It's not on my list, but I. It could have been any other day. It's a really, really, really good game, but it was on Cinema's list, so I wasn't like her. I didn't think about it for like ten hours. Yeah. It's a good game. It's a really, really good game. And of course, I think we both recommend all of the games on yeah. both of the list as good gateway games. Yeah. So that's your number two. My number two was your number seven, which is King Domino. This is a really nice game. It's super quick. You can play it like 10 to 15 minutes. You can teach it in like two minutes. Just bam, bam, bam. Draft tiles. You put your little king marker beside a domino tile. You take the domino tile and you put it in your kingdom and you try to match up the different um, areas, different yeah. uh, regions to get the big spaces and get crowns on them, which are also on the, on the little dominoes to get points at the end of the game. It's, it's super quick, super simple, not many rules, really easy. I love it. Yeah. Uh, and you have this like queue system. So and when you take uh, uh, what you have to call it a domino piece. Yeah. Yeah. Tile. Yeah. You like uh, also take a uh, place in the mm -hmm. queue for the next turn. So if you really want a piece, but it's like all the back in the queue, you have to wait to the last turn to take your next piece. And I think that's really nice. And it's really good balance because it's always the best piece. Like. The, what the game says is the best piece yeah. is at the end of the queue. Yeah. So if you choose that, you're going to be last in taking a piece the next turn. So you probably, you can't always get the best piece. Like no. it's a really, really great way of doing that. Uh, maybe I should not go last. Uh, that piece is really good. Maybe I want to go here so yeah. that I will not be last next turn again. It's, it's a really, really yeah. nice system. I, I really like that. Also love Queen Domino, the, the like uh, the big brother and the big yeah. sister. Yeah, 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 Like the big sister, you always say like big brother, but this is the big sister of the game. Which is like the next step game of, of King Domino, mm -hmm. which is really, really, really nice. That's my number two. Which yeah, is your and number, my number seven? Or, yeah, yes, my number is. seven. Yeah. And then we are at number one. So what is your number one? My number one is the game Quadropolis. Okay, so let's see. Oh, it's also mine. Ooh. We are aligned again as like three three games that we have at the exact same space, yeah, actually. Exact at this point. That's same. really fun. We don't look at this on the list when you make it. It's 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 fun to see this uh, quadrupolis from Days of Wonder. They make some amazing games. Do you want to say something about this game? Uh, yeah. Could you explain it, please? I can. Thank yeah. You. Quadrupolis is a game where you want to build a city. You have this little map of the city with different numbers from one to four, and you have your architects, which also have numbers from one to four. Then you have this main city board with a lot of different uh, buildings, which are also like in four or five. I think they're five. Five rows, I think, yeah. in that. And what you actually do in your turn is that you take your architect and you put it beside a row uh, or a column, and then you count that many points. Like if you, I put down my number two architect, I count two buildings in, that's the building I get. And now I have to place it on my board, but I can only place it in the number two spot. So everywhere there's a number two, I can place it. So it's a puzzle all, all like getting the architect at the right spot and also getting the buildings at the right spot. So you want to. There's kind of different buildings and you want to build this building beside this building. You want to build a lot of these buildings. You have these like houses which you can build uh, stacked up on each other, which is really interesting. It gets more points, but doesn't take so much space on your board. And also when you place your architect, you put like this city manager or some abstract thing that makes 
blocks every direction to him for the next player. So it's kind of a blocking thing. But it's really, really quick. Yeah. Really interesting. And I love that it has this like basic and advanced game. So yeah. that after you play the really basic neat. game, you learn the basic game, you play that a lot. And then you can just add a couple of rules and make the game even more interesting. Yeah, it's really nice. I really like this one. We got it a few years ago. We got it actually, I think, like the day it came out in, I think yeah. it's two years ago. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was right. 2016. Yeah, the Easter yeah. of 2016 it came out. Yeah, and uh, I when we first got it, we, we absolutely loved it. Mm -hmm. And we haven't gotten it to the table in like over a year or so. I think but actually I played it in the last year, but yeah, I don't maybe. remember. But uh, if we would have new people on visit, I would instantly think of that game. It's really, really nice. Because this is also one of the ones that are really simple to learn, but also really fun for experienced players yeah. and for, easy, for, for beginners. I, I, I love, like, if I would choose, I would play, like, the, the, the expert version. But I really also like the, the basic version. Yeah. And you can play it quick. You can just play two, three, four games in a row. Maybe not four, but, like, two, two three games in a row if, if it's going to be the whole night. You can play. It's, it's quick to teach. It's, it's an amazing, amazing game. And you learn, like, if what you say, like, you want to learn some mechanisms. Yeah, because if you think a little ahead of what you want to play with them later on, you can teach them this, and then there will have, like, more experience to play, like, Elban Weard's games with city building later on. That's quite a bit later, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, this is Quadropolis, now let's play ahead. small you city. You have plans for these people, okay? Yeah, you have plans for people. <laughs> we have plans for you peoples. <laughs> We're yeah, not crazy at, at all. all. No. No, no. But this is a really, really fun Just game. Just smile and wave. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really great. Like, it's, yeah. uh, it is my favorite Days of Wonder game. I like it better than Small World. I like it better than all the small the Days of Wonder games I, I, I own. And I play this. is a fantastic game. If you haven't played it, get it. Yeah. Like, even if, if you like lighter games, like if you are an experienced player, even if you're not going to use it as a gateway game, if you like lighter games... This is a really fun one. Like, I really want to play it right now. Like, I, yeah, I want talking to about just it. take it up and play it. It's quick. Yeah. It's fun. It's a really, really good game. Do you have anything else to add for Quadropolis? No, it's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. yeah. It's really, really, really good. <laughs> so, that's the end of the list. That's no yeah. number one. That's the end. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for joining me again. It's always a pleasure to speak about board games. Yeah. Because they're fun. Board games are amazing. Thank you so much for watching. Please let us know what is your favorite gateway games down in the comment. And we will talk to you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.